Hi, Else here. And today we're going to be working on shareholders equity. We're actually going to be working on green corporation. Please make sure that you download the questions. Uh, you'll see the Dropbox location below this video and download it so that you can follow along or preferred is that you actually attempt the question before I do it and then follow along afterwards. We're going to be doing a number of things during that time period. We're going to be issuing shares. I'm also going to show you how to record a cash dividend, then a stock dividend, which is quite different share repurchase which a lot of students have problems with and then i'm going to do earnings per share note that i will be doing earnings per share in 2017 not in 2016 because there's a complication when you do a stock dividend you have to do some additional calculations and i don't want to get into anything that complex for introductory financial accounting all right let's get started this is Green Corporation for the year ended December 31st, 2015. Often students ask for proper format for the Statement of Financial Position, also called the Balance Sheet under ASPE. And so what I've done is I've provided one example of what the format would look like. This isn't the be all and the end all. This is simply one format that is totally acceptable under both IFRS and ASPE. Notice that I've got share capital. It indicates my preferred shares. And I have 100,000 shares authorized, which means that I can issue up to 100,000 shares. Right now, I have only issued 4,400 shares, and they were issued for $700,000. I also have common shares here. Notice that preferred shares are listed first, and that is because preferred shares, of course, have preferential treatment. They get paid out in the case of the company disbanding first. They also get dividends before the common shareholders get dividends, so it makes sense to list them always first. Common shares, in this case, I have an unlimited number of common shares authorized, so I can issue as many as I would like. Uh, but I have only issued so far 286,450 shares, and those were issued for $6,405,022. That equals a total, notice there's a total right here, of 7,105,022. I've also got additional contributed capital. This is made up of a contributed surplus. Some textbooks call it contributed capital. I'm going to call it a contributed surplus. And where did this contributed surplus come from? I had reacquired common shares in the past, and that gave me a contributed surplus of $50,000. I've got total contributed capital listed right here. And then, of course, I have my retained earnings, which there would be a note to the financial statements, which describes retained earnings. I'm not going to show you the note to the financial statements. That's $3,428,570. And then that gives me my total shareholders' equity. You'll notice that a number of things have occurred in this company during 2016. So let's just go through them quickly. February 1st, we issued, so we're going to sell, an additional 10,000 common shares for $22 each. On June 1st, I declared a semi-annual preferred share dividend. Shareholders of record are on June 18th, and then it was paid on July 1st. On August 1st, I declared a 10% stock dividend to shareholders of record on August 14th distributed on September 1st. Shares have the following values on the noted dates. So $25 on August 1st, $25.25 on August 14th, and $24 on September 1st. I've not noted in this question, but these are common shares. So I am declaring a 10% stock dividend to common shares. On December 1st, I declare a semi-annual preferred share dividend. Again, shareholders of record on December 20th and then paid on December 31st. In addition, on December 31st, I have net income, that's according to ASPE, or profit, according to IFRS, for the year $245,800. The required is to record the entries for 2016, and B is provide the statement of changes in equity, as well as the shareholders' equity section of the statement of financial position, also called the balance sheet under ASPE. So we're going to be doing all of these things. Make sure you're following along. I'm not going to refer back to this listing because I know you can download it. When you're doing this style of question, I always recommend to students that they first put down the T account. If you don't have the T accounts, then it's going to become very, very difficult for you to determine at the end of the year how to create both the statement of changes in equity as well as the shareholders equity section. So it's very, very important that you first create the T accounts. So I have two styles of T accounts that I I do. I'm going to do the preferred shares 
and the preferred shares had a starting balance of 700,000. But I'm also going to have a little side note here about the number of shares. So the number of shares here was 4,400. I'm going to do the same for the common shares. Common shares was $6,405,022. The number of common shares outstanding at that time, 286,450. I also need a T account for retained earnings, which was $3,428,570, and an additional T account for the contributed surplus, also called contributed capital. The normal balance in the contributed surplus account is always a credit. I've got my starting point. Now what I'm going to do is start doing my entries. Every time I do an entry, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to update my T accounts so that I always have a running total of everything I'm doing. So let's start the entries. Let's start with February 1st. I sold 10,000 common shares. What did I get? I got cash. What did I give away? I gave away ownership in the company, which is represented by common shares. What was the value of what I sold? 10,000 times the price I sold it for. And in this case, I sold it for $22. That means I received $220,000 and I gave up ownership worth the same amount. Of course, I'm going to immediately update my T accounts. Now the next entry. June 1st, I declared a semi-annual preferred share dividend. A lot of students wonder where I get the preferred share dividend, so take a quick look at this. Notice that right here, $6, that is the amount of the dividend. That's the annual dividend. I am declaring a semi-annual dividend. So let's pop back. I now know that on June 1st, I'm doing a cash dividend. There are different accounts that you can use for a cash dividend. You can use the account cash dividends. You can also you just use an account called dividends and you can do it directly to retained earnings. On the other side, on the date of declaration, that's when we have an immediate liability. We owe the shareholders the amount of the dividend on the date we've promised it. So in that case, we're going to record dividends payable. What is the amount of the dividend? Well, I happen to know that I have 4,400 preferred shares. I'm going to pay them their dividend, but that's the annual dividend. I actually have to multiply this times one half because I'm paying a semi-annual dividend. That means that I'm going to pay them a dividend of $13,200. I'm going to immediately update the T accounts. I've chosen to use retained earnings, but remember that you can use dividends or cash dividends. Next entry. June 18th is the date of record. On the date of record, there's no entry. Instead, what happens is all the names of all the shareholders are written down and these are the individuals, whether they own the shares or not on the date of payment, will be paid the dividend. Next date, July 1st. On July 1st, we pay the dividend. What do we give up? We give up cash. What do we do as a debit? Well, previous to this, I recorded a dividends payable, but now I'm paying my dividend. Therefore, I no longer owe anybody anything. Same amount, 13,000. 200, 13,200. Neither of these are going to affect the accounts that I am tracking right now, so I don't need to do anything on my T accounts. Let's just have a quick recap of the entries required in order to record a cash dividend. First, on the date of declaration, we record the fact that we have a legal liability to pay a dividend at some point in the future. Second, on the date of record, we record that there is no entry because all we're doing is listing down everybody's name. And finally, on the date of payment, we record the cash payment to the shareholders. In my next video, I'll continue on and show you how to record a stock dividend.